I recently competed in my first ever jiu-jitsu tournament after just four months of training, so in this video we're going to take a look at my two matches and go over what went well and what didn't go so well. I'm obviously not an expert in jiu-jitsu by any means, but I just want to make this video to share my experience with the sport so far, some reasons why you might want to try it out, and what my plans are for the sport moving forward. Okay, here's my first match. This guy I'm up against had been doing jiu-jitsu similarly for like four or five months. I think he's a little bit heavier than me, um, but total beginner and he is training at a gym nearby about 40 minutes away and they brought their guys over so that we could have a little bit of a, a get together which is awesome so let's play it and um yeah let's see what happens so you can see here uh here's my coach standing next to me and here's the ref just checking if i have any piercings in i check my nipples i tell him no it's all good um and then this guy's getting checked too so I was really nervous going into this. I was super excited. My heart was pounding and racing. I'd obviously been thinking about this for weeks. I'd kind of ramped up my training to about four days a week, just getting ready for this. I'd been attending more of the wrestling classes because I knew we'd have to start on the feet. And I was a little bit concerned about that. And as soon as I started wrestling with this guy, I was like, damn, like this dude is pretty strong. Uh, you know, and he was pretty quick. I was like, damn, this guy's got skills. Already my heart rate is like 200 beats per minute here. And I get this little collar tie and I'm like, okay, maybe I can step around his back by pulling this arm and getting around. But it just doesn't really seem to be working. He's really stable. He's just really stiff on my wrists and, and, and kind of pushing hard. Boom, he gets me in a front headlock here. I'm like, oh no, he totally yeets me, which is amazing takedown. And at this point I'm like, oh shit, this is really not going well. He gets me into a bit of a turtle here, but I'm kind of struggling to stand back up. I'm like, maybe I can create a little bit of a scramble and just not give up my back. So I try and put my leg around here. I'm not sure this is the right thing to do. Obviously I'm not an expert, like I said, um, but I'm trying to get this knee in so I can just get guard again. And he's trying to step around, which is awesome. Uh, but I'm really just trying to fight to get that knee in there. And I think I actually do. Yeah, perfect. So I'm feeling a little bit safer here. And honestly, at this point, I'm like, okay, maybe I reach over and get this little Kimura, but he sees that coming. He puts his hands together. There's just no way I'm getting this. And at this point, I have so much just like pent up energy that's getting spent uh, that I'm honestly just so redlined at this point. Uh, right about here, the ref, boom, I'll just pause it. The ref moves us. I'll play it again so you can see the moment. The ref moves us, boom, right there. I, I saw it. I looked at the clock and I realized that it had only been, um, you know, two and a half minutes or something like that. So there was another three and a half uh, minutes remaining. This was a six minute match. And I was just thinking, oh my God, I've spent so much energy. I've spent so much gas and there's still so much time remaining. And look at all the people around. I was just nervous. There's probably 50 or 60 people in the room all watching this one match. So we reset and here I'm thinking, okay, right away I wanna pass and get side control. I wanna just beat this leg and kind of pummel it. I think I actually do get just side control perfect right here. Boom, I kind of sink my knee onto the inside and I'm thinking, great. At this point, I actually just wanna kind of control this guy. I wanna bring the tempo of the match down a little bit just so things aren't as crazy and dynamic. I wanna just bring the overall pace down and just bring some control. I feel like if I can get, get my heart rate under control, I can make some better decisions. But at this point, my coach tells me to just keep circling and go over top. I'm not super confident in North South. I don't really know a ton of stuff up there, but I keep doing that uh, and, and I do keep circling to get that North South because I feel like it'll just kind of help me establish a little bit more of a dominant position. So I continue to circle. He keeps trying to get that knee inside. I keep trying to beat the knee, I'm trying to control the head here, and I just keep going. I think from here, if I was a little bit better there, I think there's like a north-south choke that I could have got, but I've just never practiced that. I don't really know how to do that. And at this point, boom, he literally just yeets me again, sweeps me by rolling over. He puts me on my back. And again, feeling pretty burnt here feeling a little demotivated by that, but I'm like, okay, I'm gonna turn into him and I'm gonna get back up to my knees. He gets my back here, 
gets a choke and a tap instantly. It was so deep. It was directly under the chin right away. Super tight. I knew it was over. Uh, super respectful guy. Awesome to roll with. Super strong. We plan on doing another tournament in the next three months or so. I hope I get the chance to roll with him again. I think I'll just dial things back a little bit and try and bring the tempo a little bit, you know, down and just not try to be so explosive with everything and just try and uh, try and try and play a little bit smarter. So yeah, there's the first match. I lost that and I knew that I had one more match coming up and it was with a guy who goes to the same school that I do. So I'd rolled with him a few more times. Uh, so I knew that I, I, I at least had some idea of what it was going to be like to roll with this next guy. So I wasn't as nervous for it, but I did feel a little bit defeated after that first match. Not going to lie. Just quickly before we get into that, I want to cover a few of the reasons why I think you might want to try doing some jujitsu yourself. The first reason is self-defense. And I think jujitsu is really cool in the sense that it can help you kind of de-escalate a situation. Like I was talking about in that first match, if you're better than I am, I think especially at wrestling and jujitsu stuff, you can control people a lot better. You know, maybe you're out having drinks with your wife or your girlfriend and some guy wants to start some shit or whatever. You can just kind of hold that person and make them really tired and essentially just inert. And um, you can kind of bring a situation down many levels. So self-defense is, is definitely something I considered when I wanted to get into this. The second is for conditioning and work capacity. I, I mean, I, I'm, I don't love formal cardio like running or elliptical or bike or swimming or whatever. I love getting outside and doing hikes and going for bike rides with my girlfriend. But there's just something special that comes from like doing four or five five minute rounds of wrestling and grappling that I just don't get anywhere else. I think it's also because in combat sports, you're pushing harder than you probably want to because there's someone else who's helping to kind of dictate the pace. Whereas if you're just alone on an elliptical, you'd probably sandbag it and nobody really cares, right? The third reason is just kind of diversify your fitness interests. If you're anything like me, you get kind of locked into what you enjoy, whether that's you know powerlifting or bodybuilding style training or just endurance sports or outdoor activities or whatever. And this has been a really welcome change of pace and just something different that requires me to move my body in ways that I don't normally do. It's a lot more athletic. It's a lot more dynamic. Wrestling and rolling and getting moved around is a really cool thing. And I think the unique part about jujitsu is it's not just how hard you can push and how strong you are, but it's also a set of skills, something you can be a student of and learn. You watch videos and it gets you better and you show up to class and you listen and you practice. And... That's just kind of a, a really unique thing for me where most sports and things that I've done in my life are just how hard can you push, how long can you do it for, and you know how consistently can you show up at doing those things and not really skill-based stuff, so to speak. The fourth big benefit is the social thing. As you can see, there's like 60 people in that room. Some people are family members of the people who are competing, but a lot of people are just members of the gym who also train there. And Look, as an adult, it's not easy to make friends all the time. And meeting other people who are interested in something um, similar to you is it's, it's a little difficult. But going to the gym to meet up with people, you know, four days, three days a week and high five everybody and all have a good time together. It's a really great way to make some extra friends and yeah, just kind of expand your social circle. And the fifth one, I think, is just a unique benefit to combat sports in that there's something so positive that happens to your mental health uh, when you just are getting kind of, I don't want to say beat up, but you get humbled. You go to jujitsu, you wrestle, you roll with people, you get submitted, you realize that you're just really not that good at it. And not only is it physically cathartic to get manhandled and beat up, um, but also I think there's just a level headedness that comes with that sensation. When you get beat up, when you, you know, are able to express yourself physically and, and roll with people and, and, and try and beat them, there's a calmness that, that really comes with that that I just haven't gotten from much else, whether you want to call it like a flow or whatever else. The cool thing is, though, I think it's not just the, like a flow state, but it's lasting. You get home and you still kind of feel that, that sense of calmness, which is awesome. All right, let's cover the second match here. This guy goes to the same gym as me, so I've rolled with him a couple times, and he's a little more experienced than me. I think I have a few pounds on him, probably like 15 pounds or something like that. Uh, but he's he's very technically proficient. I've rolled with him probably a dozen times. And um, yeah, he's very good. So we're standing here just kind of jockeying for the position, trying to get some wrestling. I didn't really want to do a takedown because 
Sometimes I feel like when I commit to a takedown, I put myself in a worse position just because I'm not really that great at it. So I just want to kind of control things and bring things to the ground in a way that leaves me in a safe-ish position, but I also don't want to get taken down. So he's kind of pushing my head down. He's a little taller than me. Here, I really thought I was going to be able to step around and get his back, kind of an arm drag. And then I kind of get a bit of a front headlock here. And I want to get my feet nice and far away to put a bunch of weight into him, which I'm doing. And I'm kind of just trying to snap him down and pull his hands and his knees to the mat. There's a lot of weight on him here. I think this is a tough position to be in from all the times I've been in it. And there we go. He bends the knee. I think he just didn't want to wrestle there. And I'm trying to step around and, and get to his back here, but I could see him circling there and he wanted to catch my leg. Again there, he's just kind of grabbing behind the knee to control me. He's doing a good job at not letting me circle around. My arms are also kind of tied up. He's pinching my hand in his armpit there. I break it free. And as I go to circle around, he kind of postures up, but I'm able to pass the legs and get into side control here a little bit, but he's trying to stuff my head and move me with the legs here. This guy's got me in a triangle, triangle choke many times, and he almost gets it there. As you can see, he was really close to grabbing that ankle. I don't know if he could have gotten it from that position, though. Here, I'm trying to get him out, and he's doing a really good job at protecting it. And I try to get the Americana on him there, but he protects by pulling his wrist down towards the side of his body. And so I think, okay, well, if he wants to have it there, maybe I'll go for a Kimura. I reach back and I can't quite connect my hands and I can't break his hand free of his body, but then I do. And again, I'm still just struggling to connect my hands here. Um, and then I kind of have a flashback to this YouTube video I watched of John Danaher one time showing how to get into a better position for the Kimura where he shows to just step over the head. And I did that and all of a sudden it started feeling really good. And right about here, I knew that I kind of had it because it was, yeah, there he taps. Once it gets to like that open no man's land and I stepped over the head, I felt like I had a lot of pressure there. Um, awesome guy. Super nice guy. We went out for uh, Korean fried chicken after this. It was super fun. But a really positive experience there. Um, if I went 0-2, I don't think it would have been as fun for me, but it would have been a good eye-opener and learning moment. Again, super fun and awesome to go one and one in my first tournament. So my plans for the sport from here are to continue going, but probably not four days a week because I found that was really beating me up. Uh, I was just getting really tired from my joints. I got like a little bit of a thumb sprain that's lasted me the last six weeks. Still just causes me a little bit of discomfort, but it's getting better. But I think the overall reason why I want to reduce the frequency a little bit is just to focus on lifting. My primary love has always been lifting and training to get as jacked as possible right now. So that requires a lot of not only my time and focus and attention, but just my physical bandwidth, right? Like when I come out of the gym after doing a bunch of deadlifts, a bunch of squats, a bunch of pressing and pulling, relatively decent volume of training six days a week, my body just has so much recovery capacity that it can give. And four days a week, I think is too much for me. Even three days a week might be pushing the limits of what I want to do. So I think doing two days a week, one day of purely, you know, jujitsu focused stuff and one day where I focus a little bit more on the grappling stuff uh, will be a really good balance for me. And yeah, I definitely want to compete again in the next three months. If we do another one of these tournaments, that would be super fun. And hopefully I learn a little bit more by then and maybe I'll make another video and show those matches. If you like this kind of thing, uh, please let me know in the comment section. This is definitely outside of the typical realm of the videos that I make about fat loss and training and nutrition stuff, but hey, this is all part of my journey as an athlete, so I thought that I would share this, and hopefully you learn something from it too. Again, as always, I really appreciate you watching these videos. Thanks so much for being here, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace.